Hi for everyone. Uh, today, inshallah, will be the session number three of uh, this course, Drilling Fluid uh, Facts, Practical Approach. Uh, we talk in se session one uh, about the introduction. Session two was uh, Modern Years Day Approach. This session will be, inshallah, about the operational concerns. Uh, next section, next uh, session will be inhibition and contaminations. Uh, operational concerns, uh, session number three. Uh, this agenda will be in this session, inshallah, about rheology and operational concerns, uh, whole problems related. And in the last of the session, as usual, will be question and answers. Uh, rheology. Uh, rheology is a science of flow and deformation of fluid and it used to determine and calculate. We use this uh, rheology science to determine and calculate system pressure losses, surge and swap pressures, hydraulics, nozzle velocity, hydraulic horsepower at bit, uh, hole cleaning efficiency, settling velocity, ECDs, uh, flow profile, uh, fluid modeling and design suspension. All of this we calculated by using rheology and uh, rheology factors and concepts. Uh, rheology concepts, uh, first of things we have to know uh, the concept of shear stress and shear rate. Shear stress uh, defined is a the force required to sustain a particular type of fluid flow. Uh, tau, yeah, it's uh, uh, tau equal force divided by uh, force uh, in dyne and area in Q, uh, centimeter square. And dyne. Uh, divided centi centimeter square is equal bound per 100 square feet. This is another uh, unit. It's normally we use bound per uh, 100 square, uh, per 100 uh, feet square. This is a field unit. Uh, shear rate, this is the relative velocity of one lamina moving by adjacent lamina divided by the distance between them. It's equal velocity divided by distance. Velocity here per second and distance centimeter, the unit of uh, gamma shear rate, it will be second minus one. So this is a shear stress now, and this is the shear rate. Viscosity is the representation of fluid internal resistance to flow defined as the ratio between shear stress and shear rate. This viscosity is equal shear stress divided by shear rate. And then bare centimeter square divided by second. This all equal boise, but this boise is a big unit. We calculate viscosity normally in centiboise, which equal one over 100 boise. Viscosity, units of viscosity is centiboise, is not in uh, boise because this boise is a big unit for uh, viscosity. Okay, this is the shear stress now, this is the shear rate, and this is the viscosity. Also, we have types of fluids. We have Newtonian fluids and non-Newtonian fluids. Fluids are those in which the viscosity remains constant for all shear rates, providing temperature and pressure conditions remain constant. When we said this is Newtonian, that means the viscosity will not change at different shear rates. When we change the shear rates on the fluid, 
viscosity will be remain as a constant if we remain same pressure and temperature while uh, uh, changing shear rates. An example for this Newtonian fluid is the water. Water is the ideal Newtonian fluid. Viscosity will not change if you change the shear rate on the water. Newtonian fluid, which do not show a direct proportionality between shear stress and shear rate. So the uh, relationship between shear stress and shear rate is not a linear uh, relationship. And this example for, for non-Newtonian mod. That's why the viscosity of the mod is a change if we change the shear rate because the mod is non-Newtonian fluids. Non-Newtonian fluids also are classified to two groups. Group independent of time and group dependent dependent of time here will not change for the time. This is like Bengham fluids and bisidoplastic fluids. When we said Bengham, you have to remember or put in your mind when you uh, hear Bengham model or Bengham fluid, you will uh, go direct in your mind plastic viscosity and YB. And when we said bisidoplastic or lower low, you will go put in your mind N and K factors uh, for this. Uh, the event of time, here we talk about if the fluid with the time develop gel structures. And this, we talk, uh, this fluid in that time, we will call him sexotropic. Well, sexotropic is, means the uh, viscosity dependent on time. If you uh, put uh, not static for a long time, he will de develop the gel structures. And this gel structure, we have two types of gel. We have flat gel and we have progressive gel. Flat gel, this is easy to break and is not too much gel. It's just gel enough to suspend the cuttings. Progressive gel, this is not recommended in your mouth. We don't need progressive gel because this is, will be hard to break the gel when we start circulation. And if you, uh, this being hard to break, that means you will increase the pressure, maybe you will break the formation. Here, this is the shear rates and this is the shear stress. Newtonian fluid, this is a linear relationship between shear rate and so here the viscosity will be constant, will not change because the slope of this line will be the same, will not change. And viscosity is the slope of the line uh, in relationship between shear stress and shear rate. Bower law fluids, this is bisidoplastic fluids or Bower law model. Here it start from zero, but it's not the linear uh, relationship. And Bengham, it's a linear, but it's not a start from zero. Here, this is in Bengham plastic fluid, uh, 600 readings minus 300 readings will give, will give you the plastic viscosity and 300 readings minus will give you yield point. This is typical typical uh, drilling fluids. It's similar between it's uh, same like uh, plastic uh, Bengham plastic fluid and also power law fluid in between of them. So we uh, use the both of 
for our calculations. Rates starting from zero, uh, 100, 200, 300, and here 600. We and here also three and six uh, readings. And this is shear stress. This is a fan readings while applied this, this shear rate. For example, at three readings at at three RBM at six RBM at two hundred at three hundred at six hundred. And why we just uh, take one uh, three and six and one hundred and two hundred and three hundred and six hundred she rates without another num numbers because this simulation for she rates in the hole. For example, she rates inside the drill pipe between 100 to 500 and in drill colors from 700 to 3,100. In bit nozzles is a very high shear rates. In anionos from 10 to 500. In uh, solid control also from 100 to 600. In uh, mud bits, mud tanks from one to five. So we take three and six and 100 and 200 and uh, uh, 300 and 600. This will be mm -hmm. simulation for uh, shear uh, stress and shear rates for the mud inside the hole or in the mud tanks. Uh, about the Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluid, now we have flow regimes. You have to know we have types of uh, two types of regimes, the mud flow in various parts of the circulating system will be either laminar or turbulent flow or turbulent flow. This is depending on uh, Reynolds number. Reynolds number is a dimensionless number which indicates the types of fluid flow. It's e mud density multiply the velocity multiply the fluid uh, fluid density, multiply diameter, uh, divided by uh, viscosity, fluid viscosity. is a Reynolds number, is a factor of density, velocity, diameter, and viscosity. So, when we want to calculate the Reynolds number, we have to know the mud density is a factor of Reynolds number, the fluid velocity, is annular velocity or uh, it's is also of number and diameter and when we are uh, calculating ECD in the annulus we consider the diameter between the hole and uh, diameter of drill pipe or drill string out out meter of drill meter of uh, hole or casing whatever when we uh, need to calculate the fluid chain interval. So, also fluid viscosity, here effective viscosity, it's also it's calculated by some equation, but now, okay, when we calculate the Reynolds number, if Reynolds number, if less than 2,100, the uh, regime will be laminar. And laminar flow now is the highest velocity here, and this is uh, zero will be in, uh, friction with the wall. If the Reynolds number more than 2100, the regime of flow will be turbulent flow. Turbulent flow will be like this. It's normally our flow in the inside the hole will be laminar. But sometimes we need turbulent flow. When we bump tandem sweep in the uh, horizontal well, 
in horizontal well to uh, clean the cutting beds in degree between 30 and 60 degree. This cutting beds, we bump first novice to make this turbulent flow. Then we bump highway to this cuttings outside and get uh, efficient hole cleaning. This is in horizontal well especially. But normally, all the time, our uh, flow is the laminar. Turbulent flow, because this will make uh, erosion or make uh, uh, hole erosion or hole washed out if your, ter if your flow is a turbulent. Uh, this is the concept in and you have to go and discuss uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, study in details uh, the equations for uh, rheology to calculate and uh, effective viscosity, Reynolds number, like this. But actually, in the field, just you have to know the concepts because this is all these equations it's calculated by software and not report it's just enter your data but you have to know what the factors affecting your whole cleaning uh, so uh, operational concerns uh, the first operational concern is the whole cleaning we talk about the whole cleaning from the well bore is essential part of drilling operation. If we have no hole cleaning, it's uh, no uh, benefits from drilling because we need to drill and to clean the hole to make uh, efficient hole cleaning must be maintained in all wells. This is sure failure to effectively transport the cuttings can result in a number of drilling problems if we have no whole good hole cleaning effective cutting to uh, service problems will happen it's uh, excessive uh, over bull or drag on trips high rotary torque while drilling uh, stuck by hole back off it's uh, collapse the cuttings will collapse back off and lost circulation also because if your uh, hole is loaded by cuttings that will make a high pressure maybe you will break the formation because your mode weight is higher with the loaded of cuttings and also you cannot run the casing or make a cementing job and so you will lose the hole so uh, many problems affected by bore hole cleaning and okay what general factors now affecting hole they are a large number of drilling variables which influence the whole cleaning process some variables the driller has a direct control on he can change it others are very determined the drilling operation we put it in the plan from the beginning uh, main factors here is the cutting transport, rheology, bump flow rate, hole geometry, mud density, rate of penetration, ROV, drill string, RBM. Uh, cutting transportation. Here we have this uh, graph. This is well inclination from 0 to 90. Here increasing the annular velocity. Here, uh, zone number one, this is, we have efficient hole cleaning and in uh, inclination is uh, less 30, from zero to 30. Here, if we have good annular velocity, we will get efficient hole cleaning, all cuttings will go. Here, if the annular velocity is not enough, we'll find some cuttings to settle down. So we have here 
uh, partial of removal of cuttings. Here, we have very poor hole, hole cleaning. The cuttings, it's uh, settling on the bottom. So this is, will make problem for us. Maybe you cannot pull out of hole. Maybe you cannot run the casing uh, smooth to the bottom. So this is zone number one, and this is zone number three, this is zone number five. Here, if inclination more than 30, from 30 to, or from 30 to 90, we have here zone number two. Here, we have good hole cleaning. Even the inclination is uh, very high, but we have good hole cleaning and moving this cutting bit here, and it's going. Uh, here, velocity is not enough. Some hole cleaning uh, cuttings, it's uh, make, uh, cutting bits here form and uh, hole cleaning here is not uh, efficiently 100 uh, percent but here it's, we have very uh, we need to increase our factors affecting the hole cleaning for maybe uh, flow rate maybe rheology itself low shear rate uh, annular velocity, uh, no losses issue, go to increase the flow rate. It will help you. Uh, or hole geometry. Hole geometry, we talk about the hole diameter and hole angle. And if the angle from 30 to 60 degree, this uh, will take uh, two efforts to hold clean. Uh, we need high uh, or proper uh, in your mud. Uh, hold diameter and hold angle, we, not, we cannot change it. This is a fact, you have to deal with it. If the hold diameter is 16 or 17 and a half, you cannot say, I cannot uh, make proper hold hole diameter is a more big or like this. You have to deal with it. For example, if a hole is a big and you need to clean the hole, you cannot make the rheology in the maximum. Okay, go and make, uh, increase the frequency of uh, high vis sweeps for uh, big holes. And this is uh, usually happened in the uh, 24 or 23 inch, you have to, uh, and a fast ROV, you have to uh, bump hives maybe three times per stand or two times the whole cleaning uh, conditions. Uh, mud density also is a factor for whole cleaning, but you cannot increase the mud weight for whole cleaning barrels. You cannot go to the company man and request to increase mod weight because you have a problem. But you know, if you increase the mod weight, this will help you in whole clean. That's why some clients uh, make uh, high vis is a little bit higher in mod weight. Maybe just point one or like this to help for cleaning. Uh, drill string RBM, this is also are very useful in deviated wells. In deviated wells, you can increase RBM to enhance your whole cleaning, especially to agitate the cutting beds. This is for whole cleanings. Uh, another uh, concern in our operational concern is the well bore stability. Well bore stability, we have two types of bore stability. We have mechanical stability and we have chemical stability. Mechanical stability affecting factors is the mud density, filter cake, and exposure time. The mud density or ECD, the result on well bore stability is mud weight. If 
you increase the mod weight you will get higher stability but also because this mod weight is come from the client you cannot play on it the client he will say drill this formation with uh, 10 bbg for example increase the mod weight but if the whole condition need to increase the mod weight you have caving or you have mechanical stability need to increase your mod weight so you will discuss with the company man to increase the mod weight and get the approval and increase the, your mod density to uh, get the mechanical list, uh, well bore stability uh, filter cake plays also important role in stabilizing permeable formations this is important for hole stability and helps differential sticking as well uh, exposure time uh, time also is important consideration uh, when we said exposure time we talk about uh, if the hole is uh, take long time and long time uh, exposed with the mud so here the pressure uh, well bore pressure will increase and this is uh, will lose support provided by the mud weight. So our hole is stable, but stop drilling or stop operation for two three days, and after three days we find the hole stability is not okay because exposure time. Uh, chemical stability. This is affecting factors. Here we have two factors. Lack of inhibition, regardless the uh, type of inhibition or mechanism. Lack of inhibition will make the chemical uh, bore uh, well bore stability. Chemical stability, we are talking about the lack of inhibition, regardless uh, clay structures. And over dehydration, over dehydration leads to shale collapse, uh, opposite of lack of inhibition. Here we have over dehydration. We have high salinity, high salinity more than required. This is will make saturated cavings or it's a collapse because it's a very dehydrated uh, shale and that leads to shale collapse. So this is a well bore uh, stability. The another operational concern, the bit bowling. In bit bowling, especially, prevention better and more successful. All problems prevention better than treatment. But especially in bit bowling, prevention is the easier and better than and more successful than treatment because treatment it sometimes take long time. Sometimes we have to pull out the hole and clean uh, bit bowling. So prevention, how to prevent the bit bowling? The first prevention, we have to right selection of drilling fluid design. You cannot drill, for example, the reactive clay with non-inhibitive mud, with the spot mud or gel mud. You will get the severe or and also sometimes is inhibition is not enough if this is uh, clay is very reactive you cannot just uh, drill with the KCL you need another inhibition another inhibitive uh, material glycol silicate uh, BHBA to support the KCL uh, uh, second prevention is the mud maintenance M maintenance we talk about here the treatment while drilling if you are while drilling you are uh, going to drill this reactive clay you have to make your inhibition and the uh, tight fluid loss uh, high concentration of KCL, high concentration of inhibition uh, less of uh, mbt and also sometimes we add the sticks bit bowling prevention sticks it's uh, called as uh, ball buster or like this uh, or bhba sticks 
This is sticks uh, we add it in the connection uh, before every connection before entering uh, the uh, clay or reactive clay formation. When we are plus entering to drill this formation, we start to add the sticks very uh, uh, sticks every every connection to avoid the bit bodies. Okay, if uh, we didn't prevent it, plus of uh, bit boiling this uh, happen, the treatment we have four types of treatment, and each type has concept. It's a detergent. If we are going to uh, to add detergent or make detergent bill, here we are going to decrease the cell between the sticky clay and string or bit. Uh, caustic soda bill, this is, will help to make the clay dispersion and uh, treat the bit boiling because the clay in the bit boiling is uh, flocculated on the bit. You have to disperse. You will disperse by caustic soda. KCL, it's a make another thing. He make dehydration. You have a sticky clay, you will uh, put the uh, KCL bill to make not block. This is for scratching. It's a physical way to scratch with a high RBM. Spot this is not block and high RBM to scratch the bit boiling from the bit. Uh, stack pipe. There are two types of stack. Special sticking or mechanical sticking. Differential sticking, how we know this differential or mechanical? If you have full circulation and no movement up and down, you cannot go up and down, and ro no rotation, here you are stuck or you are, you are stuck differential. So when you are get differential, you will go to the solution. It, if you can cut mud weight, Okay, go to cut the mud weight because differential sticking that means you are overbalanced. It's uh, your hydrostatic column, hydrostatic column, uh, hydrostatic is the more than uh, formation pressure, so the string stick to the hole. And this is happened usually in the bare mobile formation or uh, in the bay zone and uh, or depleted zone so you have high pressure in the mud and uh, low pressure in the uh, formation and if you cannot cut the mud weight you will go to a spot freeing bill here by blacks it's a diesel and uh, uh, by blacks and lubricant and water and Required as mud weight required, and uh, normally we make the freeing bill. It's the same mud weight of uh, our mud. Uh, mechanically, uh, mechanical uh, sticking. We have no circulation, no rotation, and movement. And sometimes we have limited movement, or sometimes. Uh, this limited movement is just by stretching. It's not actual movement. It's we have no circulation, no rotation, and uh, limited movement or no movement. Here, this is a mechanical stack, and this is because no circulation, you cannot bump everything. So you will jarring. Just you will activate the jar up and down of the stack, and get free and if you uh, didn't get free you will go to mechanical back off or uh, 
to unfish the your ether string. We have type of uh, mechanical stack is a key C. This is here sometimes because because we have partial circulation. Uh, some some uh, people they think this is a differential stack, but actually this is not differential. This is a this is key C. This is come from whole geometry. It's a whole like this. Whole geometry uh, make like key C. So the you have a partial circulation sometimes, no movement, no rotation. And this is also you can jar or you can just work on vibe till get free because this is uh, it just depends on the whole geometry. Uh, loss circulation. Loss circulation is the uh, best defined as the uncontrolled flow of wall map into the uh, formation. And losses can be natural losses or induced losses. Natural losses, that means you have, uh, or you have, uh, this is f from formation itself. It's a uh, loose formation. Induced losses, this is the result of excessive overbalance condition. Excessive overbalance condition it is too much high. Um, maybe your uh, hole is not clean, so cuttings it's accumulate uh, on your uh, bump, or maybe your flow rate is very high. Uh, it's easy. Everything of this will make induced losses, especially if your, your formation is very uh, sensitive. Okay, type of losses, depending on loss rate, we have seabed losses, but severe losses or total losses. Seabed losses is less than 20 barrel per hour. If your losses is less than 20 barrel per hour, this is will consider as a seabed losses. And this C will we not stop the rate. Just we will load the mod system with a small concentration of LCM, maybe 10 LCM. It's uh, uh, calcium carbonate or mica, uh, fine and medium, and fiber, fine and medium also. And it will and uh, continue drilling. Uh, partial losses, if the losses rate more than 20 barrel, and less than 90. Uh, this is number different from client to client, but this is a range. Yeah. This is partial losses. Here also depends on the client. Some clients stop the uh, drilling and uh, spot LCM bill, but some, uh, if you can handle the volumes, you can continue drilling and bump LCM uh, bill and don't wait for soaking or uh, continue drilling and maybe the cuttings will help you to uh, close your uh, losses. Uh, if the loss is more than 60 barrel or more than 90 barrel per hour, uh, this will be severe losses or total losses. Here you cannot continue drilling because maybe you will get differential stock because you will lose your uh, hydrostatic uh, column. So here you will spot LCM bill and wait for soaking. Or if this fail, you will go to cement block. Maybe uh, some uh, companies, they have another uh, for cement block. It's a uh, spot, uh, especially LCM uh cross-linking polymers or uh, uh squeeze gunk but uh, normally you will go to the cement uh, block uh, cavings here uh, we are also we have uh, main 
two types of caving. We have pressurized caving and mechanical caving. How we know, know this caving? So the shakers, uh, pressurized or mechanical. Pressurized is the needle shaped, uh, sharp edge, uh, laminar. Mechanical caving is the rounded and, and big stones. Uh, most of pressurized caving are result of less Mud weight is not enough, so we'll get the pressurized caving. The shell will collapse because our hydrostatic column is not enough to hold these shells. Or sometimes, uh, lack of inhibition also, it maybe sometimes lead to pressurized cavings. But most of them is resulted of less of mud weight. Pressurized caving also sometimes will not stop. When we start, increase the mud weight till uh, stop pressurized caving. Sometimes you will go to uh, mud weight more than uh, initial required mud weight. For example, if this formation with the 10 BVG and you drill uh, we drilled with uh, 9.8 and have a pressurized caving. When we increase to 10, pressurized caving in that time, another stop. Sometimes we need to go to 10.1, 10.2, then this pressurized caving will stop. But if from beginning, we uh, choose the right mud weight, we will be in safe side. So all the problems, prevention is uh, better than treatment and easier uh, mechanic cavings mechanical cavings just needed to circulate it out we uh, don't uh, care about it because it's just come from uh, uh, either is, uh, touch the hole or like this is a uh, just some stones is uh, going uh, down or we can't uh, we change BHA, BHA or like this. It's just this. Uh, no need to uh, increase the motivator like this. Just only circulate it out. Uh, here uh, we uh, finish this. Before we start the question and answer for this session, I have a question from the last session from one of you. Uh, one of you asked me last session about how to make the KCL. Uh, uh, cats uh, for uh, for to uh, to check the test the KCL in the, in the test uh, the standard uh, curve the standard curve for uh, of KCL we uh, make uh, the ideal for example we bring the KCL and make fluid one percent of KCL and then uh, make the test uh, sodium perchlorate and this is the uh, fluid and and uh, check how uh, many precipitate in the tube and we will put here we have here points uh, one percent and amount of precipitation of KCL and also make fluid 2% and also check the test. 3% check, 4% check, and after that, we can uh, draw our line, and this will be. But usually, this curve is available. If you Google it, you will find it. Uh, and now we will see the question for uh, this session. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hassan, for this, uh, for your continuous effort to deliver such uh, informative, useful, and uh, simple uh, uh, sequential to the material. It is really informative, even for me with the geological background. I find it really, really easily, and uh, it comes in uh, an in ordered manner. So uh, it's really, really useful. Uh, so let us pop out to our 
to the question of today. The first question here is the increase of mud density, how it's, uh, how it's related to whole cleaning or how it can affect the whole cleaning. It's one of the question. So please let us start. Uh, increasing mud density because the buoyancy factor. It's, uh, it will push the cuttings by buoyancy will help us in whole cleaning. Okay. There is another question uh, is asking why uh, Big Naham model is not considered the shear, the, the shear stress. So uh, elaborate on this point, a Big Naham model. Yeah. Big Naham? Yeah. Model? Uh, what about Big Naham model? Yeah. Again, the question? Yeah, Big Naham model. He, he is, uh, why he is not considering low shear uh, rate is stress reading. Uh, Why is it just for higher readings of uh, shear uh, stress? Let's just take the 600 and 300 to calculate BV and YB. But we, when we, we see the modeling, uh, it's okay. I'm a very complicated thing. It's, uh, it's uh, modeling because any scientist or like this, when we work on the model, he and make his equation or model, but you cannot say why you didn't take uh, these readings. And for example, uh, Bauer law model, it's uh, uh, take the 200 and 100 and 300, but it didn't take three and uh, three readings. It take, for example, uh, take six readings, and some models take eight readings, and some models uh, eight it to uh, take only uh, two readings like Beckham. So it's just this is uh, development. Beckham start takes it and the uh, people come after him. They found this is very far from the actual or ideal uh, mod. So they take uh, the other readings to uh, mod uh, fluids as um, mod act. So this is modeling, this depends on the uh, experience or the on, or uh, or trials of the scientists. Okay, uh, there is another question between the laminar flow and turbulent flow. Which uh, which which is the more common in both vertical and horizontal well for? Uh, in vertical or in horizontal is the common is the laminar. It's just only we need turbulent flow. When we bump tandem sweep, when when we need to, uh, when we are drilling horizontal well, uh, degree from 30 to 60, this is here some cutting bits. We uh, apply the tandem sweep. What the tandem sweep? We bump low vis and followed by high weight. It's a low vis here. It's a make the turbulent flow to agitating the cutting bits and followed by high weight to push but normally in the normal drilling we need laminar flow all the time we need laminar flow okay i'm looking for a question uh but i can't see more question actually so uh, before we have more question i want to remind that everybody have to go and check the attendance sheet and join the uh, join join uh, join the link to make sure that he is the attended okay okay there is a question here uh, okay. what, uh, is it recommended to use the CaO3 CaO3 ah, weighting material in by blacks? Yeah, uh, uh, potassium carbonate in weighting materials in uh, by blacks build instead of parite. This is uh, sometimes the clients. Uh, sometimes you get differential stuck in the base zone, and, uh, and sometimes the barite is uh, prohibited. It's uh, you, they sometimes they people, uh, some clients need to use uh, calcium carbonate instead of uh, barite because barite is a damage okay. of the is... damage of formation. But this is uh, useless because in that time, all uh, already you are stuck, or maybe you will lose all the hole. And also, uh, by blacks, okay. uh, uh, friendly with the uh, formation. Okay, uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, is... sometimes we use the calcium carbonate instead of barite. Okay, uh, he is asking about the side effect. I think you've, you've elaborated this point. He said that there is an, an uh, side effect if we use barite. So that was- Yeah, barite is, yeah, yeah. is a damage. 
Yeah. I'm just from right is the damage formation. And also, uh, because the calcium carbonate in bioblacks, uh, bioblacks need to crack the filter cake. And the calcium carbonate will make the filter cake. This is the difference. Okay. The bar. Okay. Okay, there is another question. He is asking in a chemical stability aspect, if the formation is exposed to insufficient inhibitive mud, for example, of uh, uh, example amount of KCL, is it not enough to, uh, is it, 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 does it help uh, to terminate this problem even through the formation? Uh, if you have chemical stability and your mud is KCL? Yeah means you have to increase the KCL concentration or you add some inhibitive. It's uh, KCL is not enough. Maybe okay. it's silicate, you need glycol, you need politics, you need BHBA. He, he is also asking if uh, if the formation is already hydrated with water. So how it's going to be? Ah. Yeah. If formation already hydrated and uh, exposed, maybe it's uh, very, very difficult to uh, just uh, uh, help uh, this uh, inhib lack of inhibition. Uh, maybe it will take too much time or uh, it ta uh, take from you too much chemical. And also maybe at the end, you will not get the good uh, shape. Okay, there is a sometimes, question also. Sometimes in, uh, in some countries, uh, after uh, uh, worse uh, condition, they are going to displace the water base with the oil base. Okay. There is also a question. He is asking uh, to explain how does the lack of inhibi inhibition uh, cloud lead to pressurized caving? Uh, because sometimes it's swelling, it's uh, increasing the uh, it's, uh, pressure, it's swelling, pressure is swelling. It's uh, make mechanical stability. Uh, this is mechanical uh, instability. It's uh, help to make the pressurized caving. But most of them, the pressurized of, uh, caving, the, it's a result of the less mud weight. But some uh, some clients, uh, when we uh, find this uh, pressurized caving, they will request from you to increase the both of them, increase the mud weight and increase the inhibition. Because uh, we are we are uh, we are dealing with uh, with uh, no one knows uh, the fact what's happened inside the formation. It's just we are dealing about the, what we see in the service. So sometimes we are going to increase the inhibition and increase the moderate in the same time to stop the pressurized caving. And it is- Okay. Uh, thank you. It looks like there is no more question. So I would like to, okay, there is a question actually. Kindly explain the process of blind drilling. There's someone asking us, in the case of total mud loss, he would like yeah. you to explain the process of blind drilling. Okay, uh, blind drilling, if you uh, no repair and you want to continue drilling, so this is will called blind drilling. It's a no repair. Uh, we, we will drill uh, with uh, mud and also we make uh, mud cap. This is mud cap, it's a uh, inhibitive mud, and then uh, uh, original mud weight. Uh, and we bump this mud cap through the trip tank in the annulus to compensate the hydrostatic column, which, which we lost inside the hole, and continue drilling till uh, section TD. This is a blind drilling. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, in order to have, as usual, in order to have the, the expected beneficial from this course, make sure to attend the last lecture. Uh, before all, I want to jot, jot everybody's memory that there will be an exam. So we will send you the material just to, in order to have your certificate. So that's, uh, thank you everybody for being here for, uh, with us today. And thank you again, Mr. Ghassan. Uh, hopefully we will meet all of you the next session and uh, goodbye. Okay, one more note. Uh, 
As usual, the, the, the material will be uploaded in the PNA Academy channel in YouTube. So goodbye.